G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a user request I'm taking on. It's a really good question. It relates to stairs and takeoff. Um, so in this case, how you can ascertain things like areas and volumes of stairs in Revit, because by default, we don't get metrics available that do this for us. Um, Dynamo is a great way to analyze the geometry of stairs and take some metrics and then associate them back to the elements. Um, I am gonna to focus today on teaching in more of a beginner style, so covering things in a little bit more depth. Um, I have been told by some of my viewers that I sometimes go a little bit too fast, go a little bit too complex. So hopefully this style helps a little bit more. Um, anyway, we're not using any custom packages today. We're just working with Revit out of the box. And pretty much all the techniques I'm using today are available in most versions of Dynamo. Um, so there shouldn't be too many problems uh, if you're following along. Anyway, um, without further ado, uh, let's jump in. So in this particular model, um, at the moment I have a few stairs modeled. Um, in this case, two stairs and the landings have been modeled as floors. Um, it's more common to model the landings as floors in my experience, because typically you're gonna to wanna to finish your stair on a tread rather than a full landing. Um, you can add the landing as the final tread. I just find this is a bit of a less common approach to take. Um, of course, there are all sorts of other topics with stairs we could cover. Um, they're an absolute nightmare of a tool to work with sometimes, things like joining stairs onto floors. There's some workarounds using slab edges, but we're not really gonna cover that today. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is add some data to store our takeoff data in, because at the moment, stairs don't really support takeoff data as they come. So at the moment, if I check out this stair, I can see that of the properties that are given to me, there's really not anywhere I can store or measure data from. Likewise, if I select a component of the stair, like a tread, or a run, um, I should say. Um, again, there's not really any properties that we can isolate. With things like walls, we do have some properties that are automatically calculated, like area and volume. Um, what we need to do is add some parameters to our model to store some measured data in instead. So I'm gonna to go to project parameters and I'm gonna add a shared parameter in this case from my shared parameter file. So you obviously probably won't have this but one of them is an area parameter and one of them is a volume parameter. So first I'll add the area parameter um, to analysis results, which can vary by group instance. And I'm just gonna apply this in this case to stairs. Likewise, I'm gonna add a volume parameter in the same way. Now I do have a video on my channel that's a little bit old now um, related to shared parameters, but most of what I put in it uh, is still Sure and correct. Um, there is a great video from the Revit kid he made recently, so do go check it out. He covered shared parameters in quite a lot of depth as well. Um, really good watches if you're looking for guides on that. So at this point now, all my stairs should have two custom parameters that I can populate. We're gonna use Dynamo to measure the area and the volume of the stairs and populate it so that we can cost take off and schedule them. Um, obviously in this case, it means that these are gonna be out of date. Uh, as soon as the stair changes. So Dynamo will need to be used to rerun this process each time you wanna do an accurate cost takeoff. Um, this is a very common thing to have uh, when you're trying to measure elements um, and they don't naturally report their areas, volumes, etc. There is a great add-in that's not too expensive called the Revit Property Wizard. Um, do check it out if you're looking for something that will automatically uh, populate these values for you on the fly. Um, in this case, because we're measuring the stairs, in quite a unique way. I don't believe that Adam would be able to do it um, unless you can find a more abstract method uh, like using tread count, for example. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna make a uh, just a new script. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do um, is just switch to, we'll probably actually work in, in automatic mode for now. And I'm gonna just maximize Dynamo, save my script. And I'm gonna begin by collecting my stairs. So to do this, I'm gonna use an all elements of category node, and I'm just gonna use a category dropdown in this case, um, just because we're saving a bit of time. You could do a category by name node if you wanna always guarantee that you get the category of stairs. But we wanna pick that stairs category. So from here, we could get element geometry. My preference in doing a workflow like this is to get the element solids instead, which will only give us any solid geometry relating to the element. So I'm gonna use the solids node and now we should be able to see our stairs. So we can see we've collected pretty much all uh, the solids in that element. Now it's gonna be broken up into a few different elements. In this case, you're gonna get two solids for the flights 
and one solid for the landing of each stair. So we do want to look at this as a combined element. But first of all, we are going to look at getting the volume of these solids. So I'm going to look for the volume node. And in this case, we can just get the volume of the solid. It's very simple, this step. The area is a little bit harder. Now we have a list of volumes. So each of those elements we've got to take off for. Um, from here, we're going to want to sum these together because we have lists that represent the stair. Now we have a value for each stair. Um, as you expect, we'll end up with the same number for both stairs. Um, and finally, we can convert this using the convert between units node. I'm converting volume and I'm going from cubic millimeters to cubic meters. And this is the volume of concrete in each stair. Now, this isn't necessarily the most helpful metric. Um, sometimes your stairs might be better measured by area. In this case, usually I would recommend the top facing surface area because if you know the nominal depth of your stair, um, the area is probably a quite useful metric to have. Um, so, because in this case, you can just convert it based on the, the, the nominal thickness of the stairs. Um, we're going to come back to this in a little bit and use this to set one parameter, but we're going to set the area and the volume at the same time. So we're going to come back to this. So for now, what we need to look at here is actually the surfaces of the solids. Now I prefer in this case, first of all, to use a node called union or by union, um, which will just turn the stairs into individual solids because currently you can see that the stairs are broken into three pieces. If I disable the preview here, we'll see that the stairs are now just combined. So now we can look at the stairs as individual objects um, by exploding them into their surfaces. So I'm going to use the explode node in this case. And I'll just disable this preview. And what this has done is actually broken those solids into all their surfaces. So we can see now we have every single face of the stairs. Notice sometimes it will actually break them up in ways you might not expect. For example, notice this is just taking the edge of one tread. So the way that these elements are put together in Dynamo isn't necessarily what you might expect um, because this is how Revit actually constructs the element. Each tread is sort of its own piece of geometry that's joined together. Okay, so now we need to isolate just the stairs and I'll just turn off this preview. I think I've still got, still got my preview showing a little bit funny. I might just reopen the script just to refresh that selection. When I'm selecting geometry, it can be a bit risky. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate what the direction each of these faces is pointing and isolate the ones that are pointing upwards. So to do this, I'm going to need to use a normal at parameter. So I'm going to look for normal at, and I'm just going to look for the normal at parameter for a surface. So this is going to be our way to check at the center of a face, um, what is the vector of its facing direction. So I'm just going to make a code block and I'm just going to say 0 0.5 because the domain of U and V for a surface is 0 to 1. So we're just going in the absolute center. I can visualize this just by getting a point at parameter instead of normal at parameter. And we can just do the same thing just so you can see how this is working. So what we're doing is taking the center of each face. Notice that point. And that's effectively where we're measuring the normal but I don't really need that. That's just there to show. Um, so at this point, we're now going to deconstruct this vector. So I'm going to use the vector Z component node, which will give us the magnitude of Z. Um, in this case, I'm just going to say, is this value greater than uh, 0.9? So almost pointing upwards. So I'm going to say Z greater than 0.9, which will form a true or false statement, noting that we're still working in a list structure that's parallel to our surfaces. So what we can do now is take this, and there's a few things we could do here. We could filter the surfaces, and I might do that first, just so you can see what we're looking at. But we're, we're passing more geometry through our script, which is a little, is a little bit less efficient. Um, so I'll do this for now, and we'll just show the difference of what we're getting. So I'm gonna do a list.create, just so we can visualize it. So the in list, we can see we've isolated our surfaces that point our out list is going to be the rest of them. So the things that we're not really looking at. So this is like the hollow tray of the stair plus the treads per se. So you could isolate different surfaces of the stair. Maybe if you're looking for the underside of the stair, you could do the opposite of what I just did. You could say, is the normal less than maybe 0 0.5 or um, sorry, not 0 0.5, maybe zero. Um, noting that you would need to make sure the value does pick up things like these faces, which aren't actually pointing down. They're pointing downwards, but they're not pointing down. 
So what I'm going to do instead, um, just to be a little bit more computationally efficient, is I'm going to take the area of these surfaces instead. I'm going to filter the areas. This way we're not generating a new set of geometry, we're just generating a new set of data. But all that data is going to represent the surfaces that we just took um, that are pointing upwards. So just a little bit of a, I guess, a computational benefit for the script. I'm just going to sum these together like we did with our volumes. And we can now say this is our area in square millimeters. So I'm also going to borrow that convert between units node by copying it. And we're going to switch between area and we're going from square millimeters to square meters. And post there, we now know that we're dealing with about 7.2 square meters of upward facing. Okay, um, the last thing we need to do is set the parameters for the stairs. So now I'm going to switch over to manual mode. I'm going to get an element dot set parameter by name node. And first of all, I'm going to set, in this case, my volume. So I'm just going to take my beginning of my script and just move it up here. So we can take our elements over the top. I'm going to set the value. And I'm now just going to specify the name of my volume parameter. So which is bg underscore dim underscore volume one. Now, if I run my script, we can see that we've set those parameters. And if we check out our parameters, there we go, we've set the volume of our stairs. We can now use another set parameter by name node and the output of a set parameter by name node is the elements. So we can now just take these elements further another step forward. Now we take their area and we can also set another parameter, in this case, the area parameter in the second step. I'm now going to run, and we'll see that we've also set the areas of these stairs as well. Um, noting that we haven't actually used any custom nodes in the script, so we could take this to other projects and run it quite similarly. Um, in this case, it is ideally focused towards uh, monolithic stairs. It wouldn't necessarily give you the same results if you're using an assembled stair, depending on how your stair is constructed. Uh, for example, if I do just test this, I haven't actually tried it, but if I take these stairs, swap them over to a assembled stair, which has stringers included. I'm not sure if the stringers are included in the stair componentry, but let's just have a look and see what we get. So I'm going to just turn on the preview for element solids, and I'm just going to freeze my volume and my union node. So yeah, so it looks like it includes the stringers in this case. Um, which isn't ideal. I mean, we really probably don't really want to be, be isolating those particular elements. So you might need to look at different ways to extract elements. I'm not sure if maybe there's more specific categories you could use, such as stair flights or, or um, rises. I'm just having a look. We've got stair runs. I do wonder if it knows how to isolate those geometrically. It does. So you could isolate stair runs, um, associating them back to the stair they belong to may potentially be a challenge um, because they're not going to know which stair owns them without using a little bit of probably python i would say um, so you'll have to be aware that you know some types of stairs won't suit themselves well to this but most of the time for an assembled stair um, you're going to be more so doing things like counting the treads uh, as a method of determining the, the, the amount of components in that stair anyway um, so it might be a little bit of a different workflow anyway but this works quite well for monolithic stairs um, obviously, once you have this data in your model, um, you can totally schedule it. So I can go to View, Schedules, Stairs. And depending on how you identify your stairs, maybe a mark or something like that, you might use that. And then I'll just add my area plus my volume. But they don't currently have marks. I'll just give them marks. Um, in this case, it's interesting. We can't see our area, so I might have went back one too many steps. I think I did. Yes, I did. So I'll just um, I'm just going to rerun that script and unfreeze these nodes, and just reopen my script and rerun it. There we go. And now we should see areas, and we can also enable totals if we want to. So I can um, say in this case to calculate totals for both, and then I can add a grand total. And we can see that now we have a total uh, facing upward facing area 
and volume for our stairs. So hopefully that was a useful way and also taught you a little bit about using element solid geometry uh, to determine some more complex metrics than what Revit gives us by default. Uh, so there we go. I hope that was a useful tutorial in learning a little bit more about how Dynamo can be used to work around some of the limitations or the missing features in Revit. Um, there sure are a lot of them. Um, I hope that the teaching style today was maybe a little bit easier to follow for some people. I am currently developing a course platform, so I am focusing on refining my teaching and communication style a little bit. So it would be great to hear um, if you watch this, if you found this easier to follow than my usual format and if you'd like to see more videos uh, in this sort of style in future um, and I look forward to sharing more videos in, in all sorts of styles in the future. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing feel free to do so and I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks, take care, bye.